Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of having to settle for mediocre are over. Welcome to Project Relationship. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Join me as I explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, and I like to talk about tough stuff. I like to talk about relationships in all of their forms and all the hard stuff that comes along with it. And this is the very first series in the Project Project Relationship Podcast. And for this first series, I've invited someone to join me. This someone happens to be my partner, Um, people always say partner in crime, but very little crimes have been committed. Uh, he's my partner in pretty much everything else. So hi, Ken. Hello. Welcome everybody. So we thought we would kick off the project relationship podcast by giving people what they have been asking for, um, which kind of freaks me out to be perfectly honest. Um, but people have asked to hear more about what it's actually like for me to live in the kind of relationship that I write about. And yeah, it's not always easy. So we're just going to talk about our relationship, how it's gone, some of the mistakes that we've made, the ways that we've succeeded, the ways that we have messed up and how we've come back from those mess ups. Um, And we're gonna start by talking about what the first chapter of Project Relationship, the book talks about, which is wanting more, Um, wanting more than just getting by, wanting more than okay, Um, and letting want be the catalyst for making a different kind of life. This is a big topic because it's actually right. It's right at the core of our relationship. It is a big topic because want is uh, it's such a driver. And if you don't, if if you have learned to work around your wants, well, everything might be fine, but it's never going to get any better than that in my experience. So we're going to talk about um What it's like to want. What it's like to want. and My grandmothers, both of them, had a habit of telling me, it's good to want things. Now, they would often say that in the frame of like, I'm asking for a candy and (laughs) it's not time for me to have a candy. Um, And they would say, yeah, it's good to want things. Um, My grandmother would just say, stay out of the cookie jar. (laughs) So I think that though somewhere in me, the, the idea that it's good to want things, it really did take take root. And I never felt disconnected from my sense of want, which I think is really, it's tightly connected to my sense of wanting more in business, wanting more in my relationships, wanting more, just wanting to move in the world towards the things that I want. But when I found you and we started having a real relationship, not just the friendship that we'd had before when we'd started like diving into what people think of as a real relationship, a romantic piece or whatever. Want was way different for you. I remember want feeling really, really different. It was. When we when we upped our intimacy in our relationship, the, the mismatch, if that's the right word, the difference in how you perceived your own want and the value you put on it and how the value I put on my want. Well, it turned out it needed to be addressed pretty fast. Like it, it came out that how I wanted things or didn't want things I actually did want and how you were just like, go after what you want. Uh, yeah. Very, <laughs> uh, very different. And it became obvious real fast. I do have a habit and a long standing. Um, tradition for myself of going after things that I want, going big, going hard. Um, We set out to talk about all of our relationship stuff at this particular time of year, um, which has actually a connection to wanting. So this particular series, series one, is going to be all about how we dealt with our relationship stuff around the holidays. 
Um, the holidays are a time when you know people make lists of what they want, and we talk about what we want for the new year too. There's this is a time of of well, it's yeah, it's often about desire. Yeah. How do you want to spend the holidays? How do you want to spend your your time together or not together? How do you want to give gifts? What the whole the whole nine yards? But the word want comes up in all those sentences. Yeah, and you and I started and then have gone through. Um, well, this is our this will be our eleventh holiday season together, trying to figure out something or other. Um, it's not exactly easy, but. One of the things that stands out to me from the beginning when it was really, really hard is that we both, we were full adults with families and there we were with a set of traditions and a set of things that we expected to do, including the traditions that we each had right. from previous yep. marriages and from our families of previous origin. Previous marriages, previous families right yeah, and then stuff we picked up along the way yeah and then the ideas of things that we wanted to do but we've never been able to do because right. our other partners hadn't wanted to or because that just wasn't how our family worked so we walked into yeah. our relationship both of us with a lot of baggage around yeah. how we spend the holidays together and what it means to have a happy holiday and it was fun to try to untangle all ah. of that because <laughs> was it fun right wasn't it fun it was exciting. <laughs> i'm not sure it was fun it was exciting it was exciting because uh yeah on the one hand there were all of the things that I did in my life that I was supposed to have wanted because that's what my family did or that's what my first wife's family did. And so I was supposed to want all that. Tradition was big for you. Yeah. And the idea of tradition. And then trying to figure out, okay, so what do we do now? Well, what do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? I want what I'm supposed to want. <laughs> no, behind that, what do you want? Yeah, I would ask you what you want, and you would. You would you would act like I was asking you a question in a language you didn't right. spo speak. But the thing is, that was fun, but a, a sort of, like, guilty fun. Ooh, I get to think about what I want? Yeah, I, I all I remember from those earliest days was, was you shutting down, actually. Like, not being able to tell me what you want, or saying it in a way that made it, sound like okay, there was yeah. all this presumption behind it. It this wasn't is, fun at first. <laughs> I, this it is learned the correct that it was way. Fun. Yeah, yeah. The correct way. I mean, so I'm now I'm thinking about the steamed pudding. The steamed pudding. Everybody loves steamed pudding. First off, nobody no. Not everybody does not love <laughs> well, steamed not pudding. Mine. But but you know what? It's just funny because here we are eleven years later and Every single year that we would talk about, well, what traditions do you really want to carry I threaten forward? To make a steamed pudding. <laughs> exactly. And then don't. You threaten to. We've never actually <laughs> had your steamed pudding. I have seen the tin. I know where it is. All right, kids, be good. Or I'm making steamed pudding. <laughs> it's. I, yeah. I mean, I think that stands out because it's obviously it's something that that resides in you, deep inside of you, that like is attached to Christmas yep. and the whole idea of what you should do. But, um, but in truth. And there is no set of rules. Yeah. And um, so now here we sit and neither of us has a living parent. Um, so we really are our family. Yeah. Right. Um, we have a, a mess of kids. <laughs> we have a whole mess of kids to make our family out of as well. And I think back to those early days and asking each other what we wanted. And I tended to be a rule breaker and a let's invent everything from scratch because I had a really tough time with holidays growing up. And you had a pretty even keeled, like it, your holidays were so even keeled yep. that I remember longing for that. Like, okay, we'll just do things your way because then it'll be even keeled. Because I had been tearing up the playbook basically every year and reinventing it. Um, trying to escape the the trouble. My mom in particular had a lot of trouble around the holidays and it caused her her bipolar tendencies woke up then and it made the holidays a time of anger and and sadness and knowing what you don't want is helpful yeah, but it's not the same as knowing what you want. It wasn't actually the same. And so I would try all these things out and um my my first husband a poor soul like he had to just like go with it just roll with that like that's that's hard like i would want to change things i was always trying to i also believe really a lot in beta tests and just like continually um tweaking and making things better which you is are great. an intelligent fast failure person Let's i am. try it do it see if it works and and as a result we have made a lot of progress in figuring out what we do on the holidays on the other hand 
sometimes I fall into the habit of wanting to make things new that everybody else really enjoys. Mm -hmm. And I, I may just be leaning into that habit I have of, of wanting more when in fact, what we have works and is good. Well, that's like, interesting. I hadn't thought about that. How sure. Yep. You, you fine is good. Yeah. It's fine, but it can be better. And when you've got really, really good now messing with it risks yeah. going from excellent back to fine. Yeah. Whereas messing with fine, yeah, maybe it'll get a little less fine, but, <laughs> but it might get excellent. And right. so it's exciting. Hmm, I hadn't thought about that. We put a lot of effort into certain aspects of the holidays and making them big and making them like really work for us. And then we actually, I think the other thing we've done that has helped us um, is in our wanting or getting what we actually wanted was that we started making it okay to cut things out. And that feels a little bit different than what I had been mm. doing. Um, I would reinvent things, but I wasn't very good at cutting things out entirely that just don't work for us. And that was sort of outside of your ideas at all. Like right. the idea of just, just, just stopping doing, doing something. this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that felt like a, something we came to pretty much at the same time. Like, oh, actually we don't have to. So this year we're talking about it in relationship to, um, Thanksgiving dinner, um, you know, and, and trying to figure out what we're going to do. And we have a tradition here that whoever, whatever child is turning 13 or has just turned 13, I should say, um, they are charged with making the entire Thanksgiving dinner. Now they get support. They have, um, they have recipes that I've collected over the years. They have some instructions. They can sit with us for as many hours as they want, trying to figure out how this works. But they, they go to the store, they buy the ingredients, and then they make the whole meal. This year has some monkey wrenches thrown into it because, um, well, here we are in a quarantine, in a, in a time when we're at the we're very least to the store. right we're not going to bring them to the grocery store so shopping is going to look very different we have so our last our youngest child is 13 this year and so it's his turn and also one of our kids decided out of the blue to go vegetarian and everybody else was kind of on board so just out of the blue we like yeah. 180 our our meals from paleo ish to <laughs> vegetarian and so now we're talking about cutting out some things that were Long-standing traditions. And by the way, we had already reinvented the Thanksgiving turkey a couple of years ago. How many years ago? We decided... Two years oh, ago, Oh, wait a I minute. Think. None of us likes Everybody turkey. likes chicken better than turkey. Rather than making a great big turkey, we'll make a, a few roast and chickens. I'm sure there are plenty of people listening who were like, wait, I don't like turkey. Why am I cooking turkey? Yep. On the other hand, it did feel like kind of a big deal. Like, oh, we're but not going to make a turkey. Like, it's such a simple thing. It felt like a like a departure from the culture. Like yeah. we were being, yep. uh, we're going to be Maybe it's ostracized. okay to depart from this culture. Maybe it is. In plenty of ways. In plenty I mean, of ways. Thanksgiving itself is a pretty twisted up thing to celebrate. I mean, right. I, we try to celebrate it as a, as a time of family. Yeah. But yeah, it's not an unladen a holiday. Happy colonizer day. Yeah, it's tough. This is a, this is tough. There's stuff that has to be talked about in relationship yeah. to the holidays. Um, and that can feel like a burden on top of everything else. But getting back well, to what I was saying, I like cutting, cutting things out that we actually don't want to do yeah. has been something that we could actually bond over. Yeah. We could actually make our relationship together stronger by saying, here's the boundary. We're going to say, we're going to, you know, not make these foods or we actually stopped cooking christmas dinner entirely that's right a few several years ago we were like oh nobody wants christmas dinner yeah. we're all treated yeah. out yep. everybody's tired everybody just wants to hang out with their stuff and relax everybody's full and wants to play here's your four course meal right <laughs> oh wait you don't want that so we just decided to stop yeah. and we leaned into the fact that that's what we do and it it, it felt weird the first year but then it felt great. And it was really, it, so it was the removal of a huge stress that we had only been placing on ourselves because it's what is done or what we had seen done. And so stepping past both our own personal experiences of how these things had gone 
through our lives and the story, the the movies, you know, the, the yeah. things that we see in movies. I think there are 94 Christmas movies coming out this season. 94 new 94 ones. 94 new okay. ones. So we have no lack of like the prosaic story yeah. of what Christmas should be. Um, and I love Christmas movies, so I'm here for that. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have to really rein myself in from trying to live inside of one. Um, or, or trying to live up to a, a story. Live up to. We're not That's, a story. We're, we're not a story. story. Right. We're, we're making our own story and we don't have to be copies of somebody else's story if it doesn't work for us. Yeah. And working for us means, how'd that day go? Do, do we feel good? Did we make good memories? Are we happy Yeah, did we, we make memories that matter to us? Yep. Did it work? And we've had plenty of really rough holidays together, like that really rough. Have. And we'll talk about that more um, in some of the episodes to come. Um, some of them have been really difficult. And right now, I, I think I'd like to just finish out this episode talking about what it means now to do more than getting by mm -hmm. at a time when we're trying to be conscious of the impact we're having on the planet. We're trying to be conscious of the fact that we have um, all these children, but we don't want to be out. Um, ex we, we want to be conscious of the fact that we're in a pandemic still, and it's not under control in the country we live in. Um, it's, it feels a little strange to be trying to lean into wanting more at a time when that, <laughs> that phrase doesn't necessarily make sense. So that's had me thinking about how wanting more for us and our kids are all older. They're 13 Changes to the 21. This is very, very different. Um, maybe wanting more for us now is really more about um, refining what has worked and letting go, like really letting go, like symbolically, ceremonially, ritually, letting go of some of the traditions that lived entirely with our parents. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my father um, died a month ago today actually today. a yeah. month ago today when we're when we're recording this um and so in many ways that was the last tie either of us had to the previous generation yeah. maybe this is exactly the year that we decide to say okay and those traditions can be set down with with reverence i, I like, like I, your I loved idea what they of tried the to create ritual for us. uh the bringing an element of ritual into the release of the things yeah. thank you we're that that served us and now we're, we're yeah. moving on to something new yeah so we had a tradition when that you introduced to me when we were first together of um offering a a gratitude plate a thanksgiving plate <laughs> basically but every single night we would do it yep. um we would put a little offering of the food we were eating, we'd bring it outside and we'd just say something we were grateful for. And I wonder if we could do that this Thanksgiving, but with a mind toward really like letting go of, of mm. what has come before and moving into the family we have now and whatever we want to make of it. Because we are about to enter a time when our kids start driving the bus. Yes. They start figuring out yep. the traditions they want for themselves. And we need to be flexible and fit around their needs and wants as they move into their lives as single people and then potentially in relationships. So yeah, this is a time of flexibility and yeah. Cause everything maybe getting some closure on can that. change and will change in ways we don't even understand. So being clear about what we're letting, what we have let go of and what we're letting go of and what we're holding on to will give us all a way of understanding how things are actually changing when they're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm pandemic weird, but the idea of, okay, I'm going to move out now and I'm going to go have this kind of life over here. And what does that mean what now? That everything mean? changes again. Right. Oh, I like what you're saying about getting clearer because I love clarity. That you makes do. me very, very happy. Um, but I, I really, really like the idea of, creating a, some closure for us around what has come before and moving forward. Um, and ritual has worked over and over again. Ritual has worked. So I think how we can do this, we can just follow the template. Like, what are we going to do? We can decide exactly what we're going to do. 
the attitude, the mood we're going to do yep. it in. And then when, <laughs> when yep. are we going to do it? I would love to do that um, on our Thanksgiving. We'll talk about when our Thanksgiving is because it's not exactly traditional. We'll talk yeah. about that later. Um, but yeah, I would love to That's a great idea. have put the offering played out, use that time to set down what's no longer serving um, in, in a reverent and thankful way. And so that we can know that, that we are bringing what we want out of the holiday for ourselves and for our kids into the day. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So that was us and wanting more maybe by actually taking a little bit less right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. By stepping back. Okay. You'll hear more from us. Uh, episodes are one through, uh, and 13 are oh. coming soon. Yeah. 13. I wrote you in for 13 are right. coming right along. These will all get released this season. Um, and all about the holidays. So yeah, stick with us and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the project relationship podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. In episode one, we talked about what it means to want more in our relationships and how hard it can be to negotiate for our wants, especially around the holidays. You heard us live troubleshoot our plans for updating our family holiday traditions this year. I hope you take this season, the end of 2020, which has delivered us a lot of punches, as an opportunity to reimagine your love and maybe your holidays too. If you're looking for more Project Relationship, you can find it at joliehamilton.com. That's J-O-L-I-H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N.com. Join us next time for a discussion about what it takes to feel really empowered in love. Until then, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. <laughs>